just love that song heaven beckons heaven beckons us all because of what jesus did on the cross Could keep you six feet down. You could hear hell singing that victory song. But a funny thing happened. The devil thought wrong. The devil thought wrong, thought wrong. Problem. 
Uh, praise Jesus for bringing life to me. Oh, man. I don't know about y'all, but I needed some saving. And he came in, and I'm a completely different person. People see me, they used to know me, and they're like, what happened to you? It's just, it's so great. I wish I could go back and tell that girl that was in the darkness five years ago that there is a better way, that you don't have to be stuck in darkness no more, that there is a better way. And this song kind of talks about that. You go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. You come back with the head of my enemy. You come back and you call it my victory. Yeah.
It is so much better his way. Just worship him for a second. Holy Lord God Almighty. How many would just worship him for a second? We just worship. Holy. The angels sing this in heaven. Holy Lord God Almighty. We worship. Come on, 
on one more time. Sing it. Holy. We sing it to him. Holy. Lord God Almighty. Keep singing that. Is there someone here that's hungry for God's touch? Come on. Is there anyone here that's hungry and said, you know what, I need God to touch my life today. And that's you, lift up your hands, God. We pray right now the power of the Holy Ghost be released in this room. We pray your kingdom come in power. We pray the fire of God release right now. We pray the glory of God release over this building right now. I pray healing virtue pass through your body. I pray the anointing, fresh oil, fresh oil, Fresh oil, power, release, come down upon this room right now. We pray healing, virtue, release right now. Come on, sing it again. Worship him one more time with this song. We can sing it out. Holy. Come on, let's stay in this. Holy. You are holy. You are worthy of our worship. Come on, let's bring it up. Holy. holy. Somebody help me. Holy. You are holy. Glorious. Powerful God. Powerful God. Holy. 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 Release your fire in the service, God. Fire in the service, God. Release your power in the service, God. Kingdom come in power, God, we release. Kingdom come in power. so deep with God that you come out changed. Take us into the Holy We need help, Holy Spirit. We need your help. Take us into the Holy I'm going to get begin to pray for you. I pray, Father, right now, a release of healing virtue. Release. I pray that backs are healed. I pray that someone that came in with hip pain, that your hips are healed. I pray the fire of God pass through your body. I pray emotional healing be released to you right now. I pray that someone that came in here burdened with depression, that it has to go right now. I pray the joy of the Lord release fresh new wine in the name of Jesus. New wine of the Spirit release upon the building right now. We declare it's a new day for this pa for Passion Church. We de I declare hearts set on fire by the power of the Holy Spirit. Healing virtue loose through the room right now. Break everything that can be broke. Break every chain that binds, God. Break every yoke that binds. Break the yoke of unbelief and religiosity. We pray, God, how many would help me? We pray, God, become a living reality to us, God. Let the truth be more real to us today than we've ever known before. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're in this room and you feel like maybe God healed your body, raise your hand where I can see it. I see a couple of hands going up. Like you can actually tell like something changed in your body where God healed you. Raise your hand again. You guys see that or look around? How many believe that God actually does miracles that easy? One of you guys that raised your hand, would you, would you tell us what happened real quick if I come to you with the mic? Would you tell us what happened? I just want to hear what God did real fast. I had a uh, hip sprain, but now it's like, it's not sprained. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else want to get, want to tell what God did real fast? Anybody? I had a lot of worry on my heart about going to the house center. Uh, I'll go there on the 15th, but now it just feels. The worry left you? The depression? Yeah, can somebody give God a praise? Hallelujah. 
Listen, so what we're doing is on purpose. We're not trying to make a show, but how many want this house to be a house filled with God's yes. glory? Filled with God's glory. I feel like God's calling tattooed people out of the streets. He's calling people out of the clubs. He's calling people out of the highways and the byways. And he's saying, I want you to know that I will fill you with my glory the same as I did the people in the Bible. How many want to be somebody? We're imperfect people, but we're people that we're willing to say, yes, God. We're willing to say, yes, God. We don't believe that God's just some kind of religion, but he's a person that wants to visit you and he wants to change your life. Amen. So help us on these services because we're going to see an increase of this. And next next, next Sunday, it's going down. This Wednesday, it's going down. Amen. How many would raise your expectation with us? It makes a big difference when you come into a church that, with faith. And we're like, come on, God can do this. Come on. And you're not looking at the preacher saying, I don't know if that guy can do it. How many know it's not about that? It's about we believe our great God can do this. And, and we're going to, how many would help us to build a church full of faith? Does that make sense? And we're going to see God's glory move in unprecedented ways. And so we, we're going to see, uh, listen, next Sunday, we're going to see a different measure. Today, if you want a, a fresh touch from God at the end of this service, don't leave. We're going to pray for you and God's going to touch you. Amen. So help us when you come to church. Bring your fire to church. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Are ready to take some communion this morning? Let's welcome Miss Kathy. That was awesome. You know, I love to minister communion at such a special time. We know that also as the Lord's Supper, they're going to go ahead and pass out uh, communion while we're, we're talking about this. You know, Jesus was preparing to go to the cross the night before he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot. How many of you remember this from the Bible? Yeah, we've seen it in the movies, you know. But this is a real thing that happened. The night before he was betrayed, he desired to have a very special meal with his disciples. He was establishing a new covenant with his own blood which would pay for all sin, for all mankind, for all time. Every time we take communion, we remember that Jesus is the only way to the Father. We renew our covenant with Him, and we are reminded that He paid the price for your redemption. Redemption is a big word, and we may not understand what that means. But actually, when you're born, you belong to the devil. Isn't that something? Because we're born into a sin nature. But Jesus came, and he gave his blood so that we could be redeemed out of that sin nature. Isn't that good? It's so important, the communion this morning and the commitment that you're making in your heart when you take communion. In just a minute, we're going to read Matthew 26, 26. Are y'all ready? Now as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and he said, drink this. This is my blood, the blood of my new covenant, which will be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Right now, if you'll go ahead and take the bread. Father, we thank you for your body that was broken. And if you'll drink the juice, which represents his blood.
Lord, we thank you for your precious blood that you spilled that day so many years ago. And it is still powerful and active today in our lives. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, the ones we know about and the ones we don't know about. You're the only one that knows our heart, God. We believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to you except through him. Jesus, we accept your blood sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins, the healing in our souls, our bodies, and our mind. And Father, we ask you to create in us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. And I thank you, Father, for the price that you paid so many years ago, Jesus, that we could have a right relationship with you. So I just ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to bless us, each and every one this morning, Lord, and give us the revelation of the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. forsake you. I will be with you always, even to the very end of the age. I am working all things for your good. I will withhold no good thing from you. I am your shield and your great reward. I am your light and your salvation. I am the stronghold of your life. I will give you eternal life. I will give you abundant life. I will give you peace. I will give you rest. I will give good gifts to those who ask me, and I will give strength to the weary, power to the weak. I am close to the brokenhearted, and I will comfort those who mourn. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will hear you, forgive you, and heal you. I will be found by those who seek me. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will do whatever you ask in my name. I will listen to you, I will fight for you, I will set you free, and I will not change. I will redeem your life from the pit and crown you with love and compassion. I will finish the good work I have begun in you. I will never blot your name out of the book of life. I will come back and take you to be with me. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Good morning, everybody. I'd like for y'all to help me welcome our online church. Thank you for watching us on Facebook Live. If you could click like and share so that we can get the message out, we'd appreciate that. Located in the seats in front of you, we have offering envelopes. If you would like to make an offering today, we'll be picking that up in a few minutes. At this time, I'd like to release our children. If you haven't already signed your children up for Children's Church, you can do that in the foyer and then escort them over to the Children's Ministry. Visitors, if you're joining us today, please fill out a Connect card. They're located in the foyer. You can also collect your free gift. On the back, we have our next steps, becoming a member of the church. After church today, we'll have our on-ramp 
one class in the cafeteria. We'd love for you to join us for that. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our favorite pastor, Pastor Kyle. Can you guys say with me, on ramp? So what do you, why do you have an on ramp? So you can get on the highway and start moving, amen? <laughs> So this is our introduction to the church class. So if you haven't been to On Ramp 1, uh, we, please don't miss today after service, okay? If you haven't been to On Ramp 1, we don't want you to miss the highway. Get run over. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you love the church, if you call it your church, please try to come. And even if you're interested in checking out the church and becoming a member, On Ramp 1 is going to be in the cafe over here on the side. Amen? Right after service. So we'll probably be praying for a few folks, but as soon as we get out of the altar, we run over there and be there. Amen? So the name of the uh, message is called The Spirit Comes to Revive. And uh, how many know that it's important who you hang out with and who you're coming around? Because uh, when you're coming around somebody with the fire of the Holy Spirit on their life, then it helps you to, 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 to want to be hungry for God, to love God, to want to do right. Amen. Not because just because uh, you know to do right, but because you're empowered to do right. You want to run after God because the presence of God is touching your life. How many of that God said, you didn't choose me, I chose you? So he, choo he chooses you first. How many of that God chooses you first before you ever thought about choosing him? Well, you guys realize the anointing, the power of God, the presence of God that touches your life is what makes you want to follow God. It's not because uh, how many, if you try to follow God in your own and you're out of your own will, how many realize that's a failure like waiting to happen? You're going to fail. But if how many when God touches your heart, then you start longing for him. You're like, I don't know what it is, but I'm just becoming interested in the things of God. So you got to feed that hunger. Amen. So the name of the, the, the message is The Spirit Comes to Revive. Uh, we just went to a Latino revival in uh, Houston. I don't know if it was five, six, seven thousand 7,000 people. It's, I, it was hard to count that many people. But uh, just the power of God coming and this, uh, this, this, this man named Ricardo Rodriguez. I used to visit his church when I lived in Columbia, South America. His church is about, has about 70,000 people in it. And uh, a lot of things that I had seen in the American church was shattered when I experienced this. And uh, just the power of God would uh, just rip through the building and people would be electrocuted by the power of God and radical healings, people getting out of wheelchairs. And they would do a big, a big open air uh, meeting in Bogota, Colombia once a year. And this big open air meeting, they would have like a million people would get in this, would, is now in this meeting. When I was going there, uh, it would build up to Sunday had 500,000. It, if you're ever in a crowd of 500,000, it takes about 40 minutes to get through the crowd to get to a porta potty. And uh, dude, one time we brought a girl that she wasn't even saved, didn't even care nothing about the things of God. And, and this is what happens in those meetings. And the, she was just struck down, like in the middle of the meeting. And uh, they have all these plastic chairs out, and you would hear the chairs go. <laughs> You're like, another one bites the dust. <laughs> but uh, God would just touch people in these meetings, man. And uh, I don't know if you're like me, but I don't want the North American version of the gospel. I want the Bible version of the gospel. I want the gospel of power where people are chained. Jesus said to heal the sick and to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. How many of that takes power? That's something that you can't just look good and be polished and put a suit on and be good with people and that that doesn't work. You've got to have the presence of God, amen? And I feel like God is saying that he's calling a generation that wants his presence and wants his power, wants to know him more. In fact, it, it, more people qualify for that because you don't have to be the who's who and look good. You know what I'm saying? You just got to be you, right? And all your imperfection and say, God, you know what? I can't do this on my own. I don't want to do it on my own. I want to do it with you. I want to walk with you. And so right now, God's calling people like that, Amen. Let me go ahead and get through the offering. So uh, can the ushers please come up and help us? And I want to give you two verses. We're talking about uh, the power of partnering with God in your finances. Uh, and also, like recently, I've been feeling, this is my own, my, in my own life personally, uh, I've, been, I've been more into like giving my way out of financial issues. Like when you have a, how many of that you can give your way out of debt? See, very few people know that. Is it, true what the, is it true what the Bible says, give and you'll receive? Yes. Press down, good measure, shaking together, running over. Is it true or not? Yes. So it's a question of is it true for you, <laughs> right? And when you test God at this thing and then you walk with God and God blesses your life, it's part of your faith. It's a very important part of your faith. Somebody said, well, why is that? Because all of your trust in this world goes through money. 
So real quick, Exodus 34, 26. And also, if, the, if people don't give in a church, it literally can't, can't even operate. So don't demonize it when a church asks for an offering because of some pastor somewhere on a TV show that has an airplane. Because that's like one in a million. You know what I mean? Most churches are struggling. People are shutting the doors. I think it's something like 1,500 pastors a month in America alone leave the ministry because they don't want to fight anymore. People don't realize it, man. So, you know, I have, I've had my own business for several years. So whenever my first time I ever had to ask for an offering, it humiliated me. I'm going to ask people to help me find it. If you own a small business, let me tell me that wouldn't bother you to ask somebody else. It's like, you know, and God said, and I said, the first time I asked for an offering, I was like, man, I don't like this. And God said, you'll do it for the rest of your life. <laughs> so it's part of a, uh, what the Levites did. It's part of a priestly uh, call. We have to do this. You guys ready? And you have to learn it if you're going to, if you're going to advance in every area. So Exodus 34, 26, you shall bring the very first, I said the first, of the first fruits of your soil in the house of the Lord your God. So it's very important not only that we give a percentage of our, we partner with God with a percentage of our finance, but it's important, the first. And this is important to me. Like, can I be super candid with you? I don't always give the first. In fact, last week I forgot to give the first, so I have to give last week with this week, and I'll give it today. Does this make sense? So this is real life, man. We're not perfect. We're just saying this is what the Bible says, and we're trying to walk it out. Amen? So real quick, uh, Nehemiah 1037. I know I'm saying that. My wife's like, what? You didn't give first? <laughs> Jessica's really good about it, and, and, and it's really important, you know. So Nehemiah 1037. Uh, we will also bring the first of our dough, our contributions, the, fir- the fruit of every tree. So, so watch what's happening. is whatever they did to make a living, this is what they were giving from. Does this make sense? Uh, the new wine, the oil to, to the priest at the chambers of the house of our God, and the tithe of our ground to the Levites. For the Levites are they who receive the tithes in the rural towns. I like what it just said because this is showing you that we're not just looking for an evangelist to give an offering to. We go to a church in a town, and we support that local church. Amen? Because if you didn't, then it wouldn't. nothing would work. Amen? So let me go ahead and pray over you. Father, we just pray... As we obey your word, not because of a preacher said so, but because we are partnering in faith with what you said in your word. We pray, open up the windows of heaven. We pray, how many would help me? Open up the windows of heaven over our church and over our family. Lord, that we could not contain the blessings that would come. We rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and release the ushers. So the spirit comes to revive. So we were in this revival. So Friday, I don't know if y'all can listen and give at the same time. I I can't, but I'm asking y'all to. That's a joke. Anybody else can't do two things at one time? (laughs) So so it depends on what it is. Can you chew gum and walk? I can't. I got to sit down. (laughs) No. So Friday, how many, how many are kind of like spontaneous people? It's not everybody, but how many spontaneous people do we have? Okay. So it looks like half or maybe more. So uh, Friday, I'm at work, and I haven't told Chris this yet, so I might get in trouble. And I was supposed to uh, finish this flooring in this room, and I got real close. Okay, so I went to lunch, and, uh, and at lunch, uh, uh, I saw a post on Facebook from a friend of mine in Columbia. They said, oh, this guy, Ricardo Rodriguez, is going to be in Houston. And I was like, oh, cool, man. Let me schedule it. Let me schedule it. And it says, oi. How many know what oi means in Spanish? Today. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. You t- it's like a three-hour-old post. It's only lunch, and it's happening at 5 or 6 t- today. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, my God. So I got to talk Jessica into this. And she's not always a spontaneous person. So I, call- <laughs> so I called her up. I'm like, do you realize who's going to be an hour and 43 minutes from my house? I used to- I've taken buses around mountains to get to this guy when I lived in Colombia because of the revival that's happening in Bogota. And uh, I'm like, he's going to be in Houston and at this church. And so we got to go, man. We got to go. She's like, well, I don't know. Like, we got to go. So like, okay, we're going. <laughs> so I aired up one of my flat tires on my truck. <laughs> got our job close to finish, but didn't finish quite finish it. And uh, jumped in the truck and took off to Houston. And just the power of God, the fire of God came on us so strong. And how many know that God's willing to pour out his presence? He's just looking for us to not be scared. Come on, tell your neighbor, don't be scared. I'm serious, man. Like, he's looking for people that are like, I don't know what's going to happen when more of God shows up, but I want some. (laughs) Come on. He's he's looking for people that are saying, I I just don't want to stay the same. 
And quite frankly, not everybody is thinking that way. Like a lot of people are like, well, I'm pretty good the way that I am. And just in my spirit, I'm called to preach to people that are not okay with staying at the same place in life that they are. How many understand that? So a lot of people that come to this church, you're like, you know what? I don't know what it is, but I've got to move forward, you know? And sometimes it's a, it's a cry of desperation because of the way we are. We're, we're, we're killing ourselves and the people around us. But sometimes it's just because, you know what? We're just bored. I get bored with staying the same. I don't want to stay the same. Come on, it's boring, you know? I want to, I want to challenge. I want to grow. I want to say, see, what God would tell me if God were to speak to me? What would my life look like if God were involved? What would my finances look like if God was back in my small business? Can somebody help me? What would my life look like if I did it with God with a kingdom mandate? And, and how much more satisfied would I be seeing people getting baptized? And by the way, and is it not next Sunday? Is it next Sunday baptism? It's not next Sunday, but next Sunday we're going to see a, we're going to have another baptism. And a special friend of mine, Tim, over here is signing up to get baptized. Where is he at? There he is. And it's going to, y'all give him a hand, man. And it, it's going to be awesome. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this anyway. Mike, do you want to give a, a one-minute, two-minute testimony? Be brave. Come on, y'all give Mike a hand. A hand. This is my buddy, Mike. We've been friends since, uh, since teenagers, so I love this guy a lot. And he had a breakthrough in his finances, and I want him to tell you real quick. All right. So, yeah, I've been struggling, paying, covering everything. And even, you know, when you give, when it's hard, that's when you see something happen. So I started doubling what I was given on Sunday mornings. And uh, unexpectedly, I was given a raise at my job. So yeah. <laughs> I had no idea that it, you know I could even rise up that way I was just give it to God he'll make a way <laughs> but, but yeah that's what happened so I just thought that was really cool because we're not saying like Mike's not saying I'm going to give everything that we have and then we won't even have food he's not being uh, unwise he was just sensing in his spirit and he, he did what he felt like and then was it a week or two weeks after he got a raise? two weeks two weeks 14 days later he's he gets he's either that whenever I felt like it was hard for me to let go of my money that you know I did and something happened I was benefited can I be real honest it it's hard I feel the same way it's hard from I, I tithe and give to this church and it's hard for me sometimes you can ask Jessica I'm I'm as much hard-headed as anyone else and sometimes it's hard for me I'm like well man we've got we got you know we're trying to build an add-on and all this kind of stuff and and I get over in the flesh man I'm like you know what this money belongs to God, you know what I'm saying? And you people, this is about people advancing financially. It's not about pulling some kind of a scheme on people. It's like, do you believe what this Bible says? Because this is written for you, amen? So y'all give them a hand. It's awesome, man. We used to party together, so they sent me a picture. I can't tell you what was in it, but they sent me a picture a couple of months ago of us chilling back in the day. I was like, man, <laughs> we all had long hair back then. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> Something in the air in Port Natchez. I think it's toxic. Hair falling out, everything else. <laughs> Somebody say with me, the spirit comes to revive. So God wants to revive us by his spirit and help us to raise our expectations. Have you ever thought about this? Like, people don't want more because they don't expect more because you, you didn't, Mike, you didn't expect something to happen, really. And we'll see, in all fairness, we'll see, in all fairness, in his job, it's like it was kind of capped off, like he was telling me, like, he, so he didn't really see what I mean, so... But I'll tell you what else about Mike is he's not just sitting there, uh, twir he's not just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. He's the hardest worker they got. So he puts his hand behind his work and he gets it done. Amen. So people can learn from that too. Amen. And still, he, and still, and still he's, <laughs> and still comes to serve at the church with his sometimes with his work shirt on, oil everywhere. Come on, let's get it for Jesus. I mean, that's real life stuff, man. And, has it ch and it's changed your life, hasn't it, to, to, to get behind the purpose of God and to see people. You're a part of every single salvation, man. Every single baptism. is, And, and you shine up there, bro. And it's powerful, man. What would we do today if we didn't have Mike on the guitar today? See what I'm saying? 
We would have had to rap or something because all we had was drums and bass. <laughs> and somebody would have said, rap's not of God. I'm out of here. See what I mean? So you're holding it together, man. That was a joke. <laughs> revive. Somebody shout revive. It means to restore to life or consciousness. How many know that if you're unconscious but you're still alive but you're in a coma, somebody can be walking, your loved one can be walking by, your father could walk up and hold your hand and you don't even know they're there. And I feel like God is reviving people to a consciousness of Jesus, amen? We're so conscious of sin and of our failure that it's hard to even think about looking in the face of Jesus. We'd rather hide from the face of Jesus, am I right? So what God wants to do is raise our expectations, amen? And he wants to revive us so that our eyes open and we say, this is a good God. And when I come to God with my issues and I come just as I am, he's not condemning me. He's saying, come on, I'm going to show you how to walk. I'm going to show you how to grow. I'm going to show you how to learn. Amen. I'm going to show you how to be born again and live a brand new life. Amen. So set your mind on heavenly things. So remember when I write these things, I'm, I'm really hearing God throughout the week. I feel like one of the big keys, how many wants to grow a little bit spiritually, set your mind on heavenly things. I mean, it's important to think about even literally what's happening in heaven right now. Man, there's angels rocking now. People are worshiping God 10,000 times 10,000. In your own personal prayer life, imagine, don't get your eyes off the hell of this earth for a second and fixate them on heaven a little bit. That's, that's Colossians 3, by the way. It says, set your, heart, set, your eyes on, set your heart on heavenly things, not on earthly things, for your life is hidden with God. And when Christ, who is our life, appears, you will also appear with him in glory. So there's something about learning to fix your heart on the things of heaven. How many realize that if, if this is something the Bible teaches us? Can we be honest? How many of us actually think about heaven every day? Okay, we have some, right? You're, bi you're a biblical Christian then. <laughs> I think that you should think about heaven because you've, we invest everything that we are into the things of the earth. We want to look pretty. We want to look good. We want to have people to follow us. More likes. Are you with me? And, dude, we're investing everything we have in a planet that's fading away. And most of your life will be lived in the spirit, not in the natural. Come on, man. We're selling out for a bowl of soup. Number one, you ready? Number one, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead lives in me. Come on, say he lives in me. Romans 8, 11, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, no, somebody help me, come on, somebody help me. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Somebody give God a shout if you believe that. Do you realize the same spirit that woke Christ up from the grave? Come on. As soon as you say yes to Jesus, that same spirit lives inside of you. Come on. How many of the messages that you're going to hear in this church, you can't sit there and put it in your brain. you got to put it in your spirit. Amen. So uh, we, are current, we are continually under the influence of death until God comes to us through Christ. The younger you are, the harder it is to see it. The older you are, the easier it is to see that we're under the influence of death. Everything starts sagging down. <laughs> You're like, is that even me in the mirror? I used to own a comb and a brush. Now look at me. <laughs> Do you realize that we're continually under the influence of death? Let me help you. So how many have, have ever dealt with depression and oppression? That doesn't exist in God. So where did it come from? Or is it just that we're so busy sucking in the toxicity of this planet that we've become used to it and we accept it? Oh, yeah, give me some more rat poison. It's, good. it's what I normally eat every morning with my coffee, right? I mean, because we're so used to receiving it and be poisoned and intoxicated by this present world. The Bible in the book of Revelation talks about being intoxicated by this world. How many know this? How many know that when you're under the influence of something, you do things you wouldn't normally do? What if you could be under the influence of God's grace and love? Come on and be transformed. See, God knows that. God knows that we are compelled by, by demonic forces, that we're influenced by this toxic, poor nature's air that we breathe. <laughs> That's a joke. But you're actually being influenced by the spiritual air that you breathe. 
I was talking to my wife about this. If, if you sit down, I'm, gonna, now don't, I'm not condemning anybody. I'm going to give you my terrible testimony. If you sit down at the TV at 8 or 9 o'clock at night because you think, well, I don't waste my whole life watching TV, but you sit down at 8 or 9 and you, and you go to sleep at 12, you just spend like five hours watching movies that most of that stuff is going to be some kind of somebody getting killed or some kind of some, somebody trying to seduce you. And so you're being seated for five hours and that's almost a full-time job. That's 35 hours a week, man. 35. And then you're like, well, I don't even feel holy. And you're like, well, what if we are doing whatever everybody else does? But what if we should try to do a little bit more Bible stuff and get Bible results? Somebody might think that's, in, that's, in, that's extreme. Is it really extreme? People go on fruit fast just so they can look better. They're not even saved. And they fast on juice for 40 days to look better. My God. I mean, how, how many's ever dieted so you can look a little better? And, and it, it really was a lot of trouble to go through. But it's like, what if we did a couple of things to change our spiritual diet and we would feel good, man, 24-7? We'd be fed from manna from heaven. And people in our own house would say, we don't even recognize you. You make us want to be more like Jesus. Come on. What if it was actually a, 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 a heaven or hell issue? Like people around you need to see Jesus in your face or they would never follow him. What if God set you in families and in friendships on purpose because he knew that you would be the first to get saved? He knew that you would be the first to get saved, and the people around you would follow you out. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. This life is by the grace power of God. Life is by the grace power of God and also influences our thinking. This level of life resurrects us as we continue with God on our journey. God is resurrecting us from dead things. Somebody say dead things. As we cooperate with the Spirit of God, he resurrects every area of our life. What area do you, come on, God says, if you give it to me, I'll resurrect it. How many know it takes a little bit of faith? Faith is spelled R-I-S-K. It takes a little bit of faith to give something to God and let him resurrect it. Amen? Our mind, our family, our health, our finances all can be resurrected through the promises written to us in the ancient scriptures. Amen? Number two, God raises up from dead thinking. He raises us up from dead thinking. How many have realized that you have some dead thinking? From dead thinking, which produces dead behavioral patterns. See, every behavioral pattern you have comes from dead thinking. That's why Jesus doesn't come and condemn you for doing wrong. He does not. He says, let me help you see things differently. That's what repentance is. It's a divine perspective. I'm going to open your, that's why if I scream and shout and holler about somebody's sin and bang them up, oh, you sinner, you're over here perverted and lying and stealing. How many know, well, so have I. What person hasn't done these things and for us to shake our bony finger at somebody else and tell them to get out of their sin? That's not right, man, because Jesus is not trying to condemn. There's, no, there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. He's trying to teach us to walk in the Spirit so we break the law of, spirit, of, the, of sin and death off of our life. He's saying, I want to show you a different way to break the weights off so you can run for God, amen, because you were always purposed in God, whether you have a business or whether you're just a family, whatever you have have, you're always purpose to do it in God. Amen. How many realize that if you don't do family with God, you might lose that family. God will preserve your family. He will preserve what you love the most. Amen. Ephesians 2, 1 through 2. And you he made alive. Come on, stay alive. See, we didn't realize when we received the baby Jesus that we were receiving the full-blooded King Jesus, the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he was going to make us alive in every single cell of our particle of our being. Amen? And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses. What does that mean? You were doing the wrong thing. And sins in which you once walked according to the course, watch this, of this world, according to, say it with me, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who is that? The spirit who now works in the sons slash daughters of disobedience. So when we do wrong, a door opens and a king comes out and reigns over us. The prince of the power of the air. His energy and his power begins to flow through you. So what happens is then you start thinking in terms of failure, I can't do it. I can't do it. If I have to live like this, then I'm just not like one of those people that can live like that. So I'm just going to have to miss it on this one. But God's saying, well, actually, well, yeah, of course you can't do it. Every time you fail was proof that you weren't doing it with him. 
Every time we've ever failed and slipped and fell, it was, it was a moment that we were not walking in faith. How many realize that faith and condemnation do not, you cannot walk in both at the same time. So whenever you walk outside of faith and you condemn yourself, then you don't get back up and you, and you wait in your sin for a while. And you're like, well, I'm one of the ones that messed up. Look around. We're all the ones that messed up. But some of us keep getting back up and we're like, I'm not going to give up on my Jesus because what he did for me deserves me to get back up and shake the hater off and keep moving forward. I got to keep moving forward. And then I'm, gonna, I'm not going to just be a survivor like Beyonce. No, I'm going to get full of the Holy Ghost and power and I'm going to become an overcomer. <laughs> I'm a survivor. No, I'm an overcomer. <laughs> <laughs> we're survivors too but let's focus on becoming an overcomer right come on <laughs> so we are spiritually dead before we invite Jesus to be the Lord the Lord the King <laughs> how many know you can come to a church and be dead have you ever done it yeah. you can come to church and be dead as dead it can be but the day you say I want you to be the Lord I want Jesus to be the king of me and my family. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We might have served all kind of other stuff before, but as of right now, the curse ends and the blessing begins. We're going to follow the Lord. We are continually controlled by the prince of the power of the air, the enemy. We're continually controlled by him until we are first resurrected spiritually and then continue to follow in the ways of Christ. And let me tell you something. How many would identify with this? When you start saying, yes, Jesus is not just my homeboy, but Jesus is my Lord and my king. When you start saying that kind of stuff, you'll say it before it's actually fully true. you got to talk yourself into following God. you got to speak good things over yourself, man. Don't start repeating what the devil says over you. Oh, I'm no good. I can't do this. Don't say I can't. Can't never could. Amen. You got to start saying what Jesus wants to say over you. We repeat the curse and we live in the curse. The devil's the one hovering over you saying you can't do it. You can't do it. You ugly. You can't get it right. Look at all these other people that have it right. No, nobody has it right. Amen. <laughs> Unless they have the right Righteousness of Christ inside, amen? Then it starts to, you start to grow in the righteousness. If you first said yes to Christ, how many realize the enemy is going to come in your house like a sword to devour? He's going to try to pit the people in your house against you. The book of Psalms chapter 2 says, why, has, why have the nations raged and they've gathered together against the Lord and against the Lord's anointed? Why? Is that true? So this is a word to the wise. Look, let everything around you, God's going to shake it. And if it's supposed to be in your life, you need to pray for your family. But if, if they're supposed to remain close in your life, how many know that God's going to redeem it? Come on. So you need to be praying and don't strive with them in the flesh. Don't strive with them in the flesh because you're going to say things that are going to hurt each other and you can never take it back. Amen? And, they'll, and then they'll be wounded and then bitterness and then all this kind of trouble. In fact, I just felt the Holy Spirit say that there are families in this church that you need to go to your house and you need to ask each other to forgive and you need to pray for the Holy Spirit to touch the spouse and lay hands on each other. How many would be willing to, to do something uh, to have a faith act with Jesus and say, you know what, man, this stuff works. So we're going to get the hater out of our house, trying to destroy our relationship, and we're going to say, you know what, I forgive you for the things that you did. And, 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 and maybe you need to be the example, and maybe the other spouse isn't ready to do that. Maybe they just look at you like, well, okay, well, yeah, you needed to say that. <laughs> and you're going to get mad and take the low road, amen? Take the low road and let God fight your battles. How many think that could be a key? The enemy inhabits the air. The air that we breathe is inhabited by the enemy until you come into a Holy Spirit-filled church. <laughs> come on. Why? Because we're inviting him into his house. Because the Bible gives promises that the church is the house of God, that it's the gateway of heaven. Amen? And because people are praying every single day, either in this church or around this church, for God's presence to come. Amen? How many know that your house can be an expression of the church house, Right? So the enemy is inhabiting the air that we're breathing. So we got to learn how to breathe in the Holy Ghost. We need to be raised from spiritual death, Romans 6, 4. We teach this in the baptism class. Uh, so this is a really important verse. If you've heard it, then you need to hear it a bunch of more times for it to grow roots in you, right? Therefore, 
We, say with me, if you're a Christian, say I. We were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. I'm going to say this. You need to have the glory of God in your church. You should experience the glory of God, the power of God that heals the sick. We should walk and be encountering the same glory that helps people to walk in newness of life. Is this making sense? And I'm sure Eric would attest to this. When we were, when we were baptizing folks, you can feel the glory of God just like it says in this scripture coming down over the baptism and we're just like sometimes we just sit there and cry baptizing people most every time I do and it's like man the glory of God literally manifests over people and they come out of the grave come on they come out of the water it's just regular old water I mean probably shouldn't try to drink it you know just like the Jordan River when people went down to the Jordan you don't want to be drinking the Jordan River but it wasn't about the water amen it was about obedience and when they went in prophetic sign when they went in the water and came out the glory comes down amen and God empowers and equips you to walk in brand and a brand new life amen we teach that in our baptism class, by the way. So if you want to get baptized, not next Sunday, but next, sign up out there, and we will call you and get baptized. Amen? Yeah. It's awesome. So how many of the do Bible stuff get Bible results? Yeah. So when we were dead, we attracted flies. Did you know that? You ever seen, you know, so whenever we're dead, we, we attract flies. What are flies? Flies are are. are I'm going to just be real blunt. Flies are demonic, demonic uh, spirits that whenever we're doing dead things, the demonic tries to uh, hover over us. How do you know that there's a, a demonic presence in your life? Because your thoughts, your thoughts. How do you know when there's a demonic presence in your life? Because there'll be something unreasonable going on in your life. And you're like, this don't even make any sense why this is happening. Can somebody identify with what I'm saying? Because it's hard to put words to this stuff. But also we know that thoughts are spiritual. Say it with me. Thoughts are spiritual. So uh, how many have learned that God will speak to you and you'll get God thoughts? So in the, in the times before we walked with God, we got other kind of thoughts. And we probably just identified with it, especially the thoughts of suicide. People will have a suicide spirit attach itself to them, and they will hear, you need, to, you need to do this, and you need to do that, because you're nobody, and nobody will ever miss you. And how many realize that we're fighting a spiritual battle, man? It's a spiritual battle. Thoughts are spiritual, and we have these flies buzzing around us. Are you with me? And so we need to be, we need to be raised from the dead. Is there anybody in this room that really identifies with what I'm saying right now? We need to be raised from the dead, spiritually speaking, Amen. That's why, that's, why, that's why the resurrection is so important in the Bible, amen? If you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, you got to realize there's some kind of stronghold in my life. I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to get this thing broken off of me. I want to live in freedom. I want to live in power, and I want my children to be blessed, amen? How many know it's a noble thing for a man to get up from his sin and say, you know what, I want to live another way. It's a noble thing for a woman to live, get up from her sin and say, you know what, I'm going to shake this thing. It's dust off of me. I'm a daughter of the king. I want to learn a better way. Amen. It's a noble thing. Amen. God knows the trouble and the struggles. You know, he knows what's actually against us. He understands that he's a merciful God. So dead means unbelief. That's why you got to get around not only a church, but you got to have faith friends. You know what I'm saying? Because unbelief is like a plague. You thought that COVID was bad. <laughs> unbelief on the North American church is rampant, man. If you see a miracle, people are scratching their heads, getting mad about it. Like, oh, I don't think there are miracles today. You're like, dude, what in the world is wrong with you, man? Like, you're talking about Jesus. Jesus was the ultimate faith teacher. Like, he would do something and say, you know, the secret, it was our faith. So he would, like, teach the secrets of faith, man. Read the Bible, amen. You should say, God, I know that people around me are in unbelief, but show my spirit how to believe. Help me, help my unbelief, amen. So unbelief is any and every area our lives don't match up with the scripture, amen. Number three, God wants to help us raise our expectations. You ready? So we need God's help before we can even begin to raise our expectations. You can't really, you can sort of have these crazy dreams, but if it's an actual legitimate expectation, then it has faith attached to it. How many know that you need God to help you with that kind of thing? You know, I know people that are like, well, I'm believing God for a million dollars, praise God, and they never saw it their whole life. 
There wasn't any faith attached to that. Can we get super real right now? But God will give you an attainable goal, and he will, attach, he will help you attach faith to it. He will, listen, he will, he will help you. <laughs> He's the helper. He will help you to raise your expectation, and you'll be like, man, I don't know what happened to me, but I'm believing for bigger things in my business. I'm believing for bigger things in my spiritual life. I'm believing for bigger things at my job. I believe my friend's going to end up coming to church with me. I believe you're going to start saying it out of your mouth. I believe God's going to revolutionize my spouse. You're gonna, I believe that God's going to set me free from the thing that I've been addicted to for so many years. I mean, your expectation is going to be super supernaturally raised by the power of Jesus, man, because God knows that we can't do it without him, and he's watching us, and he wants to help us and lift us up, amen? He's looking for somebody to say, yes, Lord, help. He's looking for humility, guys, because if we, if we don't have any humility and then we have all this breakthrough, you'll be like, well, look what I have done. Let me show you the way, brother. No, let me show you Jesus. <laughs> he's the way. Come on, <laughs> right? So God wants to help us raise expectations. God's speaking to me about this, guys, about this church and about my life and different things, mostly about just the church and my personal spiritual walk. How many, how many know that God wants to raise your expectations in some areas? Come on. So we need God's help before we can even begin to raise our expectations. God even resurrects expectation. <laughs> Come on. So 2 Corinthians 4, 13, and since we have the same spirit of faith, uh-oh, we're getting dangerous now, guys. How many realize we have the same spirit of faith? Or do you? Or do you? Come on. How many want to have a spirit full of faith? Let's look at this scripture. We have the same spirit of faith according to what is written. I believed and therefore I spoke. What came out of your mouth? What you believed. What you believed. What do you believe? What's coming out of your mouth every day? Come on. What do you believe about your spouse? What do you believe about your kids? What do you believe about our nation? Come on. Don't curse our nation, man. Come on. What do you believe? Let God raise your expectations for our nation, for our families. Come on, guys. What do you expect when you go into a prayer meeting? Do you expect the glory of God to envelop you? You should because you've got the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead inside of you. You should be like, God, I'm going to wait. and I'm not going to set a time for prayer. I'm going to wait until the glory comes down because I am a child of God. And I have the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead. And I may not be super spiritual, but my spirit is full of faith right now that you would touch me just like you did people in the Bible. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.13, read it with me again. Since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore we will speak. Amen. Somebody give God a shout of praise, will you? Your spirit has the capacity to believe, not your head. When people are super bound up, you'll always hear them say, well, I'm trying to figure things out, man. I'm trying. And it's like their mind is, you know how you can't get the signal? You can't get a signal and it's always searching, searching, searching. I'm, I'm, I'm going to figure it out. I, I, I'm going to figure it out. No, you can't figure out your salvation. You have to receive a person named Jesus, and that's the one that saves you. You can't get out of it with your stinking thinking. You've got to receive him into your spirit, man. Let your spirit be filled with faith, and then that's the foundation of your thinking now, and the spirit will shift the way you think, and your mind will change, and you'll be renewed in the spiritual dimension of your mind. Amen? So we have the same spirit of faith as people in the Bible. We must use our faith and expect more. How many will say more, God? When I hear somebody say, oh, God, I want more, then I know their spirit's coming into faith. Come on, guys. Which one of you are saying, God, well, I want more? Come on. How many would, would have the courage to say, God, I want more? Because that's when your spirit's starting to come into faith, when you want something more than what you've had in the past. Amen. We are created in the image of God. We can't live looking backwards, man. We've got to say, God, what's next? What's next? Come on, we're on a journey. We're not, you're not, you're, a journey means you're moving. You're moving. I like the way one pastor said it. If you're stuck in the woods, come on, and you're living your life and you're lost, and you're like, I don't have a purpose. I don't know why I'm here. Uh, God says, I'm going to come and send a friend to walk beside you, my Holy Spirit, and you're going to walk out of the woods with this person called the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to lead you out of the woods and back on the purpose, amen? Most people don't realize what it actually takes to get free of past things. 
People think, well, I, I'm going to go to this program for 30 days, 60 days. Let me, let me scare the snot out of you. It takes years. It takes one, two years. you got to set your heart and say, I'm going to need to be holding on to this Jesus for a long time. In fact, the rest of my life. But just to get free of the chains that bring you back down to the same thing, you're going to need to run for a couple of years. You're going to need to stay away from old friends. You're going to need to say, you know what? I want the God of the Bible. And you're going to need to do have a church service just like this in your house every day and you're going to need to come to church every time the doors are open you're going to have to decide to become a Jesus man a Jesus woman you're going to have to decide to be completely inhabited by the spirit of God and somebody said well I don't want to be all extreme like that my friends will think I'm crazy well you know what you might walk off the cliff with your friends then but I've lived long enough to know I don't want to go off the cliff with my friends I want to go up and bring them with me come on <laughs> People don't realize that's a revival spirit in the air right now. The same power of God that's poured out in Bogota, Colombia is poured out in this room right now. And people don't realize about that kind of stuff. They just think, oh, this preacher, he's hyping people up. No, that's the fire of God, man, moving through this place, man. How many of if we get enough momentum, nothing can stop this revival? We need to be the kind of church that grows by the power of God and not by the wisdom of man. We've got to be an expression of the book of Acts church in the earth so that one day people that grow churches by human reasoning will come to us and say, how do you do this thing the Bible way? How do you do, how many want to see it become a movement and influence people that church churches would follow the Holy Ghost, that they would live out of the Bible and do Bible stuff, and they would actually have the power to help people that have real problems to come out of that stuff. Resurrection power. So we must use our faith and expect more. Come on, say with me, I'm going to use my faith. Come on, somebody, say with me, I'm going to use my faith. We have to expect more. God's going to lead us that way. For I say, oh, let's look at Romans 12, 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think. Come on, somebody say with me, I'm getting rid of pride. Come on, man. But to think soberly, to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Listen, if you're under the sound of my voice, God has given you faith. It's your job to use it. God's given you faith. Come on, get started up about it. We're not going to sit there and live out of our head like everybody else is drowning around us. We're going to have the courage to live by the faith inside of our spirit. Amen. We're going to use our faith. Use your faith. Come on. Pride is the opposite of faith. Worried about what I look like. Worried about what I appear like. You know, come on, man. We, now, we should, we, should be, we should have the wisdom and say, well, I want to have good uh, self-presentation. But it's another thing to be totally bound by what he said, she said, uh, I should look like, and blah, blah, blah. Amen. And people worship the, this idol of self-image, man. Y'all feel me? But it's good to say y'all want to look good. That's totally cool, right? But to be totally, how many would agree that, man, our culture is consumed with what we look like, man. And if you don't look a certain way, you get, you get shamed, amen. If you don't, come on, like, really? And even women are, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, don't hate me for this, but even women are so worried about what other women think that what they wear, what it looks like. I mean, come on, you know what I'm saying? Like, you should, like, say, you know, and even men, are, we're worried about if we don't have a certain kind of build, then we don't look like the dude on TV, you know. Can we get a, can I get a witness right now that we're so worried about this fake image that people are doing all kind of stuff to their body to try to look okay, that somebody would accept me, somebody would love me, amen? How many know that God loves you just the way you are, man? We shouldn't be bound by human reasoning. Let your spirit fly with God, amen. Let him set you free, amen. Let him bring you into true identity. Do you expect God to deliver you? Come on. With our spirit, we believe, not with our head. Do you expect God to pour out his presence on you? Number four, God is close to the brokenhearted. Now, this is a specific word for people in this room. God is close to the brokenhearted. He's close. He's close to the brokenhearted. He will be so close to you that he won't be any closer to anyone else than he will be to the brokenhearted. But let me give you a word. He's not going to leave you broken. He's coming, to ref he's coming to fix it. He's not going to leave you broken and wounded all of your life with flies trying to come around you. He's going to come and he's going to pour the oil in there. He's going to pour his presence and his power. He's going to pour the word in you. And he's going he's to revive the dead things. Amen? 
But the devil overplays his hand. In fact, I'm going to prophesy to somebody. The devil has overplayed his hand with you because of the things that he sent against you that left you broken and hurted and wounded. But God says, now I'm going to even pour more oil. I'm going to even pour out more grace to raise you from this situation. Amen? Let's look at Isaiah 57, 15. For thus says the Lord the high and lofty one. How many know he's high and he's lofty? Who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. Come on, somebody shout, holy. I dwell, this is the Lord speaking, in a high and holy place with him who has a contrite, broken, and humble spirit. Somebody say, God exalts, uh, say with me, God draws near to the humble. Watch this, to revive. Somebody shout, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. How many know that all that means is when I've come to my end, I'm like, God, I want you to begin in my life. I want you to do something in my life. I've done my best with my life. So how many realize there are people on this planet that they will never turn to God because they're like, well, I've done pretty good for myself. And everybody says that I have. And how many know that enemy will actually seduce you and flatter you? Is this right? So a contrite heart is a humble heart. It's a heart that says, I rely on the Lord. It's a heart of trusting in God, not in self. So be, be careful about this whole self-love movement, okay? <laughs> loving yourself, man, is you shouldn't hate yourself, but make sure that you're loving God and you're loving your neighbor, amen? Because, you, because your highest purpose is to give what you have received. Because you think that loving yourself is going to make you feel better, but really you don't feel any better until you've learned to, to mature in the things of God and help somebody else. Because giving is receiving. Giving is receiving. So it's okay. I understand some of you that have gone through some trauma. You need to learn to not hate yourself. Learn to love yourself. It's okay. But understand there's a balance that we go off balance talking about, oh, I love me, myself now. I'm doing all these things for myself. Careful because the gospel of Jesus wasn't doing things for himself. But yet he enjoyed joy more than anybody else. I think he had the answer. I don't think the world has the answer. Do you? So faith is the opposite of pride. How many know that God dwells on high in a lofty place in the highest heaven right there with you in your worst trouble? <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that God is dwelling on high when you've been used and abused and hurt and broken, whether it was your own fault or somebody else's fault? God says, I am the high and lofty one, the highest in all the creation. And I'm going to come sit with you, and I'm going to hold you, and I'm going to put you on my lap, and I'm going to whisper to you that I love you. I'm going to take time for you because that's how important you really are. Amen? The high and lofty one. Come on. But imagine how we can block that with our own pride. And he's like, I'm the highest of all. You know, I'm the uncreated God. You know, because we can block that, that, that intimacy with the Holy Spirit by being self-made and, and by not having spiritual hunger. So, oh, I don't need any more of God. The opposite is by saying we're walking on the road to Emmaus with Jesus. And Jesus acts like he's going to keep on walking. And we're like, no, Jesus, don't keep on walking. Come and stay with us for a while. Come and stay in our house. Jesus, don't, don't, walk, don't walk farther down the road. Come and stay with us tonight. Amen. <laughs> How many remember the story of the road to Emmaus? And it said that while he opened the scriptures to them, that their hearts burned within them as he opened the scripture with them. How many would say, Lord, I might have a mess going on, but I want you to come stay with me. Come on. Come show me how to fix the situation. Come on. Come on. Show me what love really is. Then I don't have to worry about loving myself because I'm going to realize that I'm loved by the one that matters most. Come on. My praise comes from God, not from man. Come on. That's how true reparation, that's how God can truly repair you. Amen. Both our sins and our trials should lead us to Jesus. Both your sins and your trials, if you will take the low road, then even your own mistakes will end up leading you to Jesus. And I get a witness that there's no way that we can miss it. Watch this powerful verse out of Daniel 11. Daniel 11, 32, and we're going to uh, add 35 to it. He shall seduce with flattery those who violate the covenant. I'm going to show you that people that say, the heck with God, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, that right when we, how many have ever done that in your life? The moment that we decided to live our own way, the enemy came to flatter us. Oh, yeah, you looking so good. Oh, yeah, you fitting in perfect with these people over here. Oh, we're going to make some connections, and you're going to have a great time tonight and out on the road. And how many that all these kind of flattering ideas come, even people will talk good about you. Oh, man, you're doing good for yourself. Oh, really? <laughs> 
I mean, and you're living for the, for the kingdom of hell. Have you ever had people say, oh, you're doing so good? Why, because I got a truck? Why, because I've got blessing, but yet I'm living for the devil? Does anybody realize this world don't know what's good for us, man? Do you realize the devil will seduce you with flattery? I don't know if anybody's picking up what I'm saying. People will manipulate you by flattering you, telling you you look good, you sound good, you're doing good. The devil is trying to seduce somebody in this house with flattery. Somebody help me out right now. Because we're longing to hear these good things from people. Amen? Wow, he will seduce with flattery those who violate the covenant. But the people who know their God shall stand firm and take action. Come on, how many think that knowing God is going to be a key to standing firm? The other translation says the people who know their God will do great exploits. Somebody give God a shout of praise, would you? In verse 35, and some of those, watch, I feel like this is a prophetic word. It's, it's been a prophetic word to me, but it's going to be to you. Watch this. And some of those of understanding shall fall. This means that some of those that have already chosen that right way, you're going to end up making mistakes. Some of those have fallen to refine them, to purify them, to make them white. Man, somebody ought to give God a praise right now. <laughs> Until the time of the end because it is still for an appointed time. How many realize that when we have fallen? and slipped and messed up with our marriage or with our, or with our finances or with our addictions? How many realize that God is saying, all you got to do is get up again and say, yes, Lord, and I'm going to refine you. I'm going to purify you. You're going to get up looking 10 times cleaner than you did when you had spiritual pride because now you have true humility. Now you know that you know that you know you can't do it without me. Come on, somebody give God a praise. <laughs> Number five, prepare yourself for more. I feel like God is saying, prepare yourself the same as a wineskin. Come on, uh, you're like a new wineskin that's going to be filled with new wine. How many know that God wants us to be carriers of his presence and his glory? He wants you to be a walking blessing, walking down the road, spilling blessing all over the place. Mark 2.22, are you ready? And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins. The wine is spilt, say it, the wine is spilt. And the wineskins are ruined because if you don't have wine in the wineskin, it cracks and breaks. If you're a wineskin, how is important is it for you to stay filled? Every day, Colossians 3.16, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Let the word inhabit you. Let the word live in you. Not just putting it in your brain, but let the word live in you like a person named Jesus. Come on. Right? The more we become like new wineskins, the more glory, the more goodness, the more power, the more blessing uh, uh, God can pour through our life. We're coming to the end. How do I become more of a new wineskin? So I'm asking God right now, how many ask, would ask him with me, how can I be more pliable? How can I carry more of this blessing named God? <laughs> how can I carry more of this, this new wine glory? How many, why has it got to be wine? Because wine puts you under the influence. But we're talking about a spiritual influence called love and grace. We're, and we're under the influence of love. We're, well, I don't know. I, don't, I just don't love my neighbor very much. And the Bible tells me that I should, but I just, I'm just not feeling it. We'll just get under his influence. And then the old man, you can put off the old man and put on the new person. Amen? So watch this. I feel like God gave us a scripture to become new wineskins. Are you ready? And I'm going to basically give you four or five things in a list that you can get if you read the rest of the scripture, Ephesians 4.23. So we're going to read this. How do I become a new wineskin? How do I become a person that's carrying more of the blessing of God? Are you all with me? 423, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. God's like, for you to carry more of my glory and my blessing, you're going to have to change the way you think, the way that your heart sees things, okay? So how are we going to do that? You ready, number one? And I don't, I, I, I have it, I don't have it on the PowerPoint, okay? So uh, put off the old person and put on the new person, the new righteous and holy person. You with me? I'm going to explain now. The, the way that we used to be, you got to be like, you know what, little by little, or however much I can handle, I'm going to put some of those childish things away now. I'm going to do it. I'm going to have the courage. I'm going to put some of that away, and I'm going to put on the new self. Are you with me? And it sounds strange to have the Bible words it. I'm going to put on the new self, which is made according to what? Righteousness and holiness. Don't let that scare you. Don't let it scare you because holiness means, it's like a, I see it like this, a whole love. 
I love the entirety of who God is and what he said in his word. Because everything he said in his word was because he loved me. And for me to violate his word is to violate love. We think we know what love is because we're watching a Disney movie. Like, come on, guys. Love is manifested by what we see God doing. Amen? So whenever we break scripture, it's, it's, you know, we, have, we make mistakes. But the reality is we're violating love because God is love and God is his word. He's trying to show us. And it's important to see what I'm saying because if you don't, then you'll take the scriptures and beat people up with it. And that ain't love. That ain't love at all. So we want to be love and manifest what God wants to do. Amen? So put off the old person and put on the new. Does that help anybody? The, the, the next one is be, a, be truthful and don't be false. So but listen, a lot of us have had issues with that in our past, and we've got to start loving the truth. In fact, the Bible says that many will be deceived in the last days, but the people that love the truth, that's going to be the solution. Loving the truth. Loving the truth. Amen? What is the truth? Let's, let's, let's clarify the word, love the word. If you say, well, I don't really love the word, but you haven't tasted enough of it yet. Get more into it till you're fully addicted and dependent upon what God says to you on a daily basis. So do not let anger and bitterness control you. You have to forgive. To put on, to become a new wineskin, to carry, how many want to carry more of the blessing of God? You cannot let anger and bitterness control you. In fact, it says don't carry your anger over into the next day. You with me? How many know that not letting bitterness and anger control you means you have to forgive? It can take you years to forgive sometimes. I want to be super real with you. Depending on what happened to you, it could take you a year, two years. But how many realize that you're gonna, you might just keep picking that thing up? Oh, I don't forgive them. They should have never done that to me. Just put it back down. Put it back down because you're not hurting them. Amen? You're hurting yourself. Put it back down and say, God, I want to be the new wineskin. Fill me with the new wine. I want to expand and ferment with the goodness of God, the, in, the influence of the goodness of God, the love of God. I want to be filled with that. Just like Jesus walking around loving people that were unlovable, and he changed the world through that. Amen? And lastly, don't steal. Do the opposite and give. I don't know if, I hear, if I'm hearing everybody say amen to that. The opposite of giving life is taking life. Actually, you know the Bible says that greed takes away the life of its owner? And you can be greedy for an image. You can be greedy for what someone has. How many realize that's the old person? That's not the new person created according to Christ. This might sound like, does this sound too, like it's too much? If you read Ephesians 4 and you read to the end, these are the things that Ephesians 4, 23, 24, 25, 26 tell you. And how many believe this might be a key to, to being a new person and carrying the, the glory of God to the next level? Amen? Somebody might say, well, I don't, I'm not worried about carrying the glory of God and all that super spiritual stuff. I just want to be okay. How many know that that's how you're going to be okay? The safest place you will ever be is right in the middle of the fire of God, right in the middle of God's will. Amen? The mind of the Spirit is life and peace. I'm going to give you this scripture and one more. Let's read Romans 8, 6. Can you all read it with me? The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. You know what I try to do more and more uh, nowadays because I went through a season where I wasn't listening to a lot of preaching or worship, but now I'm getting back in. I'm like, you know what? I want to listen to some worship in the morning and at lunch and at night before I go to bed. I, in fact, I heard an old preacher say that he would put a scripture in his mind before he went to sleep to keep the enemy from messing with his mind. And I was like, you know what? In my younger years, I would have scoffed at that, but now this is, this is legit, man. So even last night and the night before that, I put a scripture in my head. What was it? I, I put the scripture in, uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and then tonight last night I put the scripture in my mind before I was going to sleep uh, Colossians 3 16 let the word of God dwell in you richly how many believe these might be some keys man some old school keys some ancient keys amen so real quick see your mind on a on set your mind on heavenly things make your house a house of prayer I don't care if it's five minutes say so you know what our house can be a house of prayer and lastly let God revive you according to his word daily. Psalms 119, 107. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Again, this is going to people that have been through a lot, okay? I am afflicted very much. 
Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. How many would say, man, I've been through a lot of stuff, but revive me according to your word. Come on, I'm going to get in the word until power comes out and revives my spirit. Let's pray. Father, we pray right now that your glory, your power fill this room. I pray your kingdom come. We pray the power of God, the glory, release new wine, loose over this room right now. Fresh oil. I pray for breakthrough. Holy Spirit, breakthrough over lives right now. We pray shift our thinking. I prophesy to you right now, God says, I'm going to change your thinking. I'm going to give you the sword of the Spirit. I pray, God, a, you would raise our expectations to by the, by the Spirit, God. You would raise our expectations, Lord, to see ourselves in a new light, to put on our new self, which is created in the image of God. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you haven't been to our class to become a member of the church. It's only 30 minutes. We're going to meet right now after service in the cafe. It's called On Ramp 1. Even if you didn't sign up, just show up. Amen? And uh, we love you. If you need prayer, you want a touch from God, we're going to have our prayer team down here. Come on down. We're going to pray for you. Amen?